Hi, beautiful people. Welcome to the Fort Salem Library, where we read you your fanfiction. So sit down or don't, relax or don't, and enjoy these stories in a way you have not before. We at Fort Salem Library do not own Motherland Fort Salem or any of the related characters. The Motherland Fort Salem series is created by Elliot Lawrence and owned by Freeform. This story is a work of fan fiction and is meant for entertainment only. We are not making any profit from these stories. All rights of the original Motherland Fort Salem story belong to Freeform. We also do not own Until Morning or any of its original characters and storylines. We did, however, get permission from the author to read their story. This story was created and written by Jordan Unbroken, and you can find the link on our show notes. This story is being read to you by me, Britt. Until Morning Chapter 6 What? Scylla sank into the chair at Rael's bedside. What did you say? I was driving a car that night, Rael repeated. I'm confused. How? Scylla shook her head. Ex- explain. That night, my mom and I were downtown doing some shopping before Christmas. It was warm for December and it was a nice day to get out and get some errands done, you know? We went to dinner and she- she had a few drinks. I just got my driver permit, so she said I could drive us home. I was going too fast, and it began to storm. I, I couldn't see. I didn't see the car. I didn't see the red light. I'm so sorry. I hit their car, and it went off the side of the road, hitting the tree. Riel's eyes were focused on her lap, head and shoulders dropping down like gravity forced her down onto herself. I... Scylla started. Tears flooded her eyes but she cleared her throat and spoke lowly and steadily. How did they think that it was your mother that drove? What happened to you? Rael's voice was thick as she answered. After the initial shock, my mom got out of the truck and went to the other car, your your parents' car. She looked inside and called 911. She came back, opened my door, pulled me out and told me to run. The rain was torrential, and there weren't any witnesses. She climbed into the driver's seat and took my place. I didn't know what to do, so I ran. Scylla sat quietly in the chair. Riel wasn't sure what to do, so she kept speaking. My mother and I were in our pickup truck, and your parents' car was so small. I didn't know they were gone until my mom never came home, and there were police at our door telling my dad what happened and that my mom was being held in custody. I only had minor injuries, and I used to get donked around in sports a lot, so nobody ever really suspected that I was part of it all. There wasn't much of a police investigation with my mom's confession. It all seemed to fall in place for everyone. Nobody else knows what really happened except for my friend, Tally. She saw the airbag bruises on my chest while changing one day and put it together. My father still doesn't know. Rael took a shaky breath. I am so sorry. Scylla's eyes focused on the wall across the room. Her voice was monotone and distant. You were fifteen. It was rainy. It was an accident. Whoever was driving, it doesn't bring them back. I know. I I know. I wish I could go back and change it all. Call a taxi instead. Stay and take responsibility. Never go out in the first place. I replayed it over and over for a long time. Scylla stood and nodded. Her dissociated voice became harsh and her eyes grew dark. Me too, always wondering if they suffered. If they thought of me in their last moments. If they held each other. If one died first and the other had to see their lover dead. I didn't have a father to take care of me. Or a mother to take responsibility for my mistakes, Rael. I spent the next two years bouncing from foster family to foster family. I was so broken and defeated. Nobody wanted me. I lost everything. Scylla turned toward the door, but looked once more at Riel. You took everything from me and made me alone in this world. 
Riel was left alone in the suddenly quiet room. Her hospital room door closed behind Scylla with a heavy thud. Everything inside her wished she could chase after her. Riel's legs burned inside the plaster cast with tension. Riel grabbed the pillow from behind her and screamed into it. Fuck! She sobbed. She deserved every bit of animosity Scylla felt for her. Riel let all of her emotions out, crying with her face buried into the pillow. She didn't notice someone had come into her room until she felt a hand on her back. Did you tell her? Tally spoke. Riel nodded. Tally handed her a tissue. It went... about as expected. I'm not actually sure what I expected. Do you think she's going to turn you in? Tally nervously played with her jacket sleeve. I'm not sure. Whatever happens, at least the truth is out there. We can move forward, whatever that means. Even if she hates me. Have you told your mom that you met Scylla? Tally asked. No, Tally, you know I... Ray, I know you haven't spoken in a long time, but this could be bad for you guys. It was your decision to make, but now I'm worried for you. Scylla could turn you in, and you and your mom could get in even more trouble for covering it up. I know, Tell, I just... Whatever she decides, her family were the ones we hurt. However much of an accident it was, she's innocent in all this. Telly was quiet and sat in the chair Scylla occupied only minutes ago. You want me to talk to her? Scylla asked softly. No, that could make things worse. Just leave her alone. If she never wants to speak about it again, that's her decision. Tally put her hand on Rael's. Whatever happens, you aren't alone. Rael laid her head back onto the pillow she'd been crying in. That's sort of the problem, Tell, Because Scylla was... Please find the fanfiction you just listened to on Archive of Our Own, and leave the author some love. Without them, this wouldn't be possible, and we want to thank them from the bottoms of our hearts for creating these amazing stories and keeping the show alive. <laughs>